and here we are already, episode 3, Cliffhanger. So we left it that Tim sold everything up, he sold the bit of land, the mobile home, bike, everything, and he decided it's time in his life, 37 years old, new century, year 2000, he was going to go off to Thailand and see if he can forge a new life for himself there with maybe a bit more luck than he's had in the States. He's still got the, the passion for painting, for doing murals and things, but with his injury on his hand, it was never going to happen again. He knew hardly anything about Thailand as well. Jin, this girl, where did she come from? How did she end up in America working in a go-go bar? What if we go back to a few years before? Jin grew up in northeast Thailand in the Isan region and like many girls was drawn from from the farm life or village life to the bright lights of Bangkok, Phuket, Patea. At a young age, from stories she heard in the village and other girls who lived in the village who'd been working in that entertainment industry. At a young age, she went off to Bangkok. She then went to Phuket and she ended up in Patea. And she worked through restaurants, hotels, bars, go-go bars, did the whole sort of entertainment circuit and met a American guy at a young age, she was probably about 19 and the American guy swept her off her feet, fell in love with her and took her off back to America. After a few years being in America, the relationship didn't work out. He was a lot older and it broke up. She'd been there, she must have been there a few years to be able to get all the documentation to stay in America, so I'm not sure of the time scale, but she ended up staying in the States and divorced the, the guy. And that's how she got there. And then she ended up working in the different types of bars in the States drawn back to Thailand after saving quite a bit of money up. She'd gone back after leaving Tim the first time and she'd gone and got herself a, a small beer bar in Patea, got some girls and the money soon started drying up. She'd picked the wrong time of the year, maybe the wrong location, but it didn't work out and she ended up closing the bar down but she did keep some of her money she didn't blow it all at that point is when she rang Tim and luckily for Jim Tim has bitten and said yes and he's on his way and this happens so often foreigner falling in love a little bit falling in love with the country a lot. The thoughts of going and working in Thailand in some venture. There's so many stories of, of guys that have gone to the entertainment zones in Thailand and got bars. And you, you, you hear quite a lot of the stories where they're reasonably successful, they make enough money to, to live in Thailand and stay in Thailand. Then there's others who just about make enough money to stay in Thailand and dread the thought of leaving and going back to their country. Um, let's hope Tim is successful, whatever he goes into. So Tim says his goodbyes to everyone in Detroit. He pays a visit to his father's grave and heads off several flights to get around, lands in Bangkok. He'd only been there the one time before, remember, with a couple of his friends for a couple of weeks. So he still didn't know Thailand, understand 
anything. He hasn't researched any of it. So he's just as green as the day he first arrived on holiday. He really hasn't got a clue about the culture, the lifestyles, the money, the business, the laws. He's got a visa, he's got a tourist visa, um, which he's got back home. And at that time they gave him a 60 day visa for his first one, of which he'll extend for 30 days. And then he'll be on the monthly visas. Back in the year 2000, they were reasonably easy to get. He arrives in Bangkok and all he knows is Jin is in Patea. He's got a phone number. He's landed in the morning. So he looks around the airport and he finds a kiosk selling SIM cards. Again, back in 2000, just buy them off the shelf, put them in a the phone and away you go. He got a SIM card, got a bit of credit and he rings Jin. No answer. But it was early in the morning, it was something like eight, nine in the morning. So he guessed that she's just asleep. So whether he contacts her or not, his idea, he's going to go back to Patea. Finds a taxi at the airport and heads off down. A couple of hours later, he pulls in and he heads to Beach Road with the taxi. There's quite a few hotels along there. He's not going to do anything extravagant, so he walks up a couple of the soys, finds a hotel uh, that's about 800 bar tonight, grabs a hotel. 2000, the exchange rate was very high, um, almost double what it is today. So money went a lot further. He checks into a hotel and makes a phone call again. This time, Jin answers. And he says, I'm here, I'm in Patea. Uh, do you want to meet? Silly question. <laughs> of course she does. She's immediately, where are you? And he gives her the hotel name and I saw you. She says, I'll be there shortly. Wait for me. How long did it take her to get there? 15 minutes. <laughs> Turns up on a motorcycle taxi. Hasn't got her own motorbike. Anne comes in, finds him. It's as if they just parted a couple of days ago. She's throws herself at him. Here she is, she's got herself a foreigner, a second one, with some money. Her business has failed. She's getting on with the age. What's her, what's, what's the reasoning behind, what's she thinking about? Is this her golden goose? Well, Tim is not huge on drinking. He's sensible. He knows the money he's got in the bank and he knows that's all he's got because he's now got no home in America. He's got no belongings. All he's got is a suitcase and some money in the bank. He's told his bank in America that he's uh, going to Thailand and that he might need to transfer some money if you find some sort of business. He's no, in no rush, day one arriving to get into talks about business. He's gonna scout around and he's gonna take some time, which was very sensible. Jin, on the other hand, immediately wants to start talking business. And Tim knocks her back and says, I've just arrived. I have no idea what I want to do. I've come to see you. I'm happy to see you as boyfriend, girlfriend. He, he lays the law straight down very sensibly. I want to take some time to find out about Thailand and business and what you can do and can't do. And I want to see some tattoo shops. This is his art mind going. He can't do the drawings with his hand, he can't do the painting, but tattoos maybe he could with his other hand, maybe he could come up with some ideas. He's got that in the back of his mind. Having a bar, he's, well, the nearest he's come to 
uh, in a bar, or drinking in a bar, or working as a cashier in a restaurant. So he has no idea. Remember, his father's business he let go because he was hopeless with uh, with running the business. Jin, very clever. She sees the sign. She knows that okay, I've hooked the guy, but he's not ready. He's not been. He needs to see everything. And she, she's faithful to him. She hasn't got boyfriends. She's been more about the business. She's quite sensible. She, she, but she's lost a bit of money. She's been halfway around the world now. She's got her head screwed on. And she then, plan B. She thinks, okay, I'm going to show you all about Patea. I'm going to take you all around. I'm going to show you the sights, the sounds. But without you knowing, I'm going to angle you into looking at bars. <laughs> oh no. Yes. She's clever girl, clever girl. Absolutely fine. Tim's happy with that. They spend the next, moving forward a bit, two months trawling around Patea, seeing every soy. And there were a lot less bars back then, a lot less, and a lot less roads. But they spent two months up and down, trying, looking at the sights, down the beach, walking street, bars, restaurants, hotels. And he stayed in the same hotel, he didn't move, he was quite happy there, had a pool. I believe it was in Soy 2, which is at the top end of Beach Road. Then formerly the big hotel at the top, the Dusset Resort. So he was at that end. He did hire a little scooter to get around on for the pair of them. And Jin moved into his hotel with him. She was in a little room. They were get on, getting on really well. Jin, very clever. She just sat back and showed him and showed him different sights. And he started to absolutely love Patea. They weren't drinking much, they were eating quite a bit, and he was actually putting a little bit of weight on. He loved the Thai food, but he loved his Western food as well. They tried many restaurants, Thai and Western. Jin started her secret hunt in the background. Although her bar had failed, she wanted another bar. Bars were quite expensive to get hold of by putting some money up front for the year's rent, key money, and also paying a monthly rent, small amount on top. Setting the bar up. If you're lucky, you could find a bar that maybe not worked or the person just wants to get out and you can get a bit of a deal so she's got all her friends and she's already gained quite a few girlfriends around Patea the little network because maybe one of the girls is going to find the right bar for her and she'll give a little bit of a kick back to the girl for finding it so secretly Jin is now looking Tim he wanders around a lot of the tattoo parlors and he realizes that he's not going to be able to do tattoo and it's not the same as painting. He doesn't know anything about all of the different machines and needles and hygiene. He sort of gives up on his, his dream. He still draws a bit, trying to learn with his left hand, but not, not a great success. The only options for him in Thailand is a guest house, a hotel, a business that's already running that he buys, but he hasn't got that much money. Okay, back then the exchange rate was high, but he hasn't got huge amounts. So he's he's thinking, I don't want to go back to America. I'm happy with gin. Kateo was starting to boom. He was in the right place at the right time. And he's saying to gin, okay, let's see if we can find something that's not expensive that we can make an income of. Maybe start small and build up bigger later. Jin's, there's the signals, absolutely fine. She's already had the lead on about four different bars in different areas. So she says to him, 
okay, I know where there's some bars that are coming up for sale or for lease renewal. Well, take a look. Tim agrees. We'll leave it there. We all know. We can all guess what's going to happen. Or do we? Is it going to be just the old story, buy a bar, lose your money, go home? Time will tell. Catch you on the next episode. Bye for now.